probably get started. So thanks everybody for joining today. Um, if you got lost on your way here, this is the CNF Cloud Native Network Function Working Group uh, weekly meeting on like Mondays. Um, so before we get started and jump in, does anybody have anything they'd like to add to the agenda? Okay, cool. Um, so I guess we'll take uh, Taylor's suggestion and we'll start uh, not with 34, which is at the top, but uh, 29 here. And so this is a short one um, from Jeffrey Salins. Is, is he on the call today? I don't think he's, so. He's not. Um, there hasn't been any pushback on this one though. Um, okay. Or nothing unresolved. Yeah. Um, go ahead, Taylor. I, I think the only one was like me suggesting that we add something else. So I, I'll um, take that back because <laughs> okay. it's something that could be added externally. Okay. Um, so basically Jeffrey's um, suggestion here is that we also add a workload context to the definition of like a best practice. And the idea is that it should be able to define um, which type of components it actually applies to. Because obviously there's different uh, components um, and not everything applies to every single type of workload. Um, and if we look at kind of the conversation in here, we can see like, obviously there's the infrastructure that are orchestrating provisioning style workloads. And then there's also the OSS BSS and so this um, addition to the um, proposal process would allow people to specify the workload context that it actually applies to. So is there any uh, conversation around this or would people, are people okay with merging this? Do we have anything that applies to the second part of that comment up there uh, of, oh, right, as far as a CNF being a single container or a suite of containers? So we don't right now. Because, you know, tests will apply differently as well. If you're referring to, you know, a single container or multiple containers making up a CNF. That um, I think we have it in different places, but not, nowhere concrete here. There's that long conversation in Slack that we need to pull um, context out, but it's wouldn't be. We're not looking at a CNF being a single container. It would be an application that may have multiple containers. You may have multiple pods. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't think we have to say it, um, the exact complexity, but there's, mm -hmm. we do have context in other places and that could be pulled together. And I, th I think that's a giant Slack conversation from about a month, I don't know, I guess that was maybe before the holidays. It's probably the most con uh, content about it. Would it be fair to say that it's a, a collection of containers. I mean, if you can meet all the conformance rules with a single container, your job is done. But if you can't reach the conformance rules, then it's not that you can't have a single container because one container is bad. It's not particularly if you can meet the conformance rules. It's just that, um, you know, um, if you can't meet the conformance rules, it's not conformant. It seems like an odd thing to specify. It's a design choice, not a requirements choice. That's fine. I just I was just asking if we had anything that applied to that second part of the statement. That's all. Do we want to consider defining the um, the, the type of workloads, i.e., something like control plane, data plane, management plane, or is it basically like a free for all field? Right now, um, it's more of free for all as far as what it where it applies and i would say that context of 
If you have a networking application and it's focused on control plane, then putting that in there would be good. Or is it user data plane and, and you're starting to deal with potentially different network types than the default, then you'd want to know that. And we can start, if it makes sense, we can make it less freeform. But the point right now is to capture um, that information that we're not, mm. we don't already have a place for. Yeah, I, I think that's actually probably maybe a good idea. Maybe it's, we could uh, like merge this as it is and then create like a, a separate issue um, basically where we can discuss like what should be in that drop down. Mm. And right now it's this when we're, there's not really a, well, it's a template. And if, if you get to the point out of the discussions, and so some of this might be new for everyone else, but the idea is if you have, if you're bringing something, um, say a, a Q, Kubernetes native best practice, that um, seems applicable for networking applications, and maybe even telco specific networking applications, then bringing it up in the discussion board on the this CNF working group GitHub repo, talking about that until you have all the content to fill out the proposals, which are similar to KEPs, so the Kubernetes enhancement proposals. This is one of the sections that would be in that proposal. And then eventually you would do a pull request. We're gonna get people to review it. And then we have an adoption of that. Yep, this is a good best practice um, that we can suggest that people can follow with caveats and everything else listed. So for right now, this is an update to the template to just have a new section, which provides a little bit more context, but we can expand on that as needed. Jeffrey's point was we didn't have any section that at least communicated that we needed some some of this information. Yeah, I guess maybe my suggestion is that we merge it as is and then create a separate issue that it needs to be like fleshed out a little bit more. Like um, when we say like workload context does apply to like single and multiple containers, should we do a drop down versus like a free form? And basically saying that this is something that we want to have included, but we don't know everything about what we want to say about it. So there's a couple of things there. One is we don't want people to be making mistakes when we put these templates, you know, a commit based on these templates in. So the documentation has to be somewhere so that people aren't asking these questions. But the other is that the first item in the agenda really is talking about putting that context into place and that might be the better place for it. And then we just need to basically add a referral from here to there to say one of the workload context as is one of the workload types as, is, as described in this section of the repo. So I think we can do that. Um, and obviously it's not actually going to be a drop down because this is a template. We don't, it's not, yeah. full, but that's, you know, the point is it's a multiple choice question and that would be where the choices live. Okay. Yeah. So Ian, you're, you're okay with merging it as is then. Yeah, okay. no, I, I think it's quite good okay. um, that we, we need this context because it, it's completely fair that, this doesn't apply universally to, or at least it might apply more to some things than others. It should be irrelevant to others. It shouldn't be actively conflicting, but that's, we'll, we'll get there when we get there and we have some proposals, I think. Cool. And thanks for whoever was uh, creating notes um, in, in, the sheet, in the sheet. So anonymous Shrew and anonymous uh, Chinchilla. Thank you. Um, so thanks for that. Um, now for poll 34. So this is the pull request from Ravi, um, basically creating the initial framework 
uh, or like, let's say like the table of contents um, for this. Now this one's been out for a while. We also had an extra week last week. Um, so we didn't have a meeting um, to like go over this. I just wanted to check one last time if anybody had any comments or like issues that they'd like to bring up um, before we merge this. And it's essentially like a table of contents. Okay, um, hearing no more conversations or oppositions, I think it's time to merge your table of contents. Obviously, uh, like everything, if you wanna change something, please uh, feel free to make a pull request um, after yeah. it's merged. Right, oh, right before you do that, um, there is this part in here about the state list. Has that conversation worked its way out? I think it's, this is one of the, I mean, we can talk about it right now. Um, I know this has always been kind of like an interesting like point in telcos because there are some things uh, like, especially around charging functions. I, I think Oliver, you're on the call, right? I, I saw yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm here, I'm here, but yeah, I, I mean, I would, I don't, I, I'm not sure how to to, uh, to classify the conversation. I, I don't think, I think we could get into a very long conversation about it now, so I'm not proposing we have it now. But I think, it, you know, at least uh, Tom and I did talk a little bit. We weren't just necessarily in disagreement. I think it's a little bit about putting some more wording around it when we just say stateless. I think we need to also need, need to at least address the fact that there are cases where state is being managed. And I think, you know, just to to not just say, yeah, uh, it's being managed by something. I think there are cases, especially within tel telecom, within networking, where you know, we have some very specific, and if we look at 5G, there's some, you know, if you've read some of these comments here, there are things that, uh, there are some network functions that are responsible for, for maintaining state. So for those you know, vendors and those uh, service providers looking at those types of solutions, I think it's good if we, if we put some, some thoughts you know, around that in, in, in some form. Can we turn the question around? Like, I agree with Oliver. I, I understand that you know cloud native in principle needs to be stateless, but if in the telecom network there are functions whose job is to be stateful, why would we not allow that? Or why would we? What would be the reason to to say no? no you still have to figure out a way to be stateless. Um, I think you have to be careful with that word stateless. Um, in the sense that, uh, you know, I can run a database in Kubernetes and it isn't stateless for obvious reasons. Um, it, it's more a question of tolerant to uh, failures, like, for instance, losing a pod, losing a cluster node um, is better or easier to do if there's no persistent state that's lost when that pod goes down. Um, so it's not that Kubernetes applications are stateless. That's simply not true. Again, can't have databases if that were true. Um, mm -hmm. Kubernetes is built on a database, so Kubernetes itself is stateful. Um, it, it's more a matter of how you get better performance, better behavior, if you can limit local state, local ephemeral state in your containers. Okay. It's more what you're saying is more a kind of design guideline that you follow as much as is appropriate than it is necessarily a requirement on CNFs. And this is something we're, we're trying to be a little bit careful with as well, because this is something that we've spent a lot of time uh, debating and getting nowhere in the uh, in the CNCF Telecom user group and other forums. Mm -hmm. And the the problem here is when you're trying to design something to be uh, cube native uh, and uh, to be more exact, if you're trying to, to aim more towards hitting uh, a uh, 12 factor style, uh, if you look at it, how 12 factor apps work or uh, extending that out to how to apply those to CNFs and these are like hard, hard earned lessons that ended up making 
Kubernetes applications more stable so, and, and also allowed them to uh, make use of the Kubernetes orchestrator more effectively. So when we start looking at that, that doesn't mean that there's no state, uh, but what we try to do is we try to separate out things that, uh, that perform certain types of work from the state itself. So a database is still a database, but uh, the thing that does the heavy lifting, generally what we try to do is separate that out from the database itself so that if we lose it or we need to upgrade it, we don't, uh, we don't lose that state. Instead, it's relying on this on this uh, data, on this database, or someone to actually hold that particular that particular state. So, when we say that the, when we say that there's no when we're talking about something that's stateless, we don't necessarily mean that uh, first it doesn't say anything about ephemeral state. It means specifically about persistent state. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one is when we talk about uh, when we talk about stateless, it's not a hard. There is no state. There is still state that lives somewhere. It's just a question of where does it live and how do we partition it in such a way that uh, that we can make the system more robust. But it's not a hard rule either. If you have a system that just absolutely requires that state to be present because of a performance reason or so or so on, you still have a an exit. You still have a way to to do it. But you you also ask yourself what do I what, what do I trade off what and um, so that way you're making decisions that are conscious as opposed to making a decision because uh, this is how we've always done it um, in, in, instead. Mm -hmm. That's across okay. the board on these. These are best practices. So it's what is the trade-off and you're, we're, we want to communicate what the value is on these, what the caveats, and then you're going to make the choice. The, the I, easy I, thing I, for stateless is to think, Handle your data in a cloud native way. That's all that means. It's a shorthand for saying that. Try to handle your data in a cloud native way. Not you must not use state. You 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 you. That's but that's but a it, kind of circular definition, arguably. But well, we uh, can spin uh, that out. But I'm saying uh, when someone reads stateless, they think you can't have state. And what uh, we're saying is, please handle your data. It's a best practice. It's not a rule. Yeah, and, and maybe that's a useful thing to discuss for a moment, because what we'd like here is a best practice that everybody follows without exception. And that one clearly can't be followed without the occasional exception. So this isn't part of this document. This is a part of another document that doesn't exist yet, which is how you use these definitions. And what I remember from back in the ISO 9001 days is it's a good idea with coding standards to have a means for documenting where you're deviating and why you're deviating from best practice. So, you know, I didn't follow rule X in this specific spot for this specific reason. And as long as you've written that down and it goes in with your compliance statement, you are compliant because you've documented your exceptions. So if we write up how you're supposed to document your compliance so that if anyone would come and test and find you know 16 exceptions if they find my documentation for those 16 exceptions then you're still fundamentally compliant but so that leads to them being rules not best practices and i think what we're going to end up with is a series of rules thou shalt not do this if you do this you're not cloud native and these are best practices to also do i i must I see your point, but I'm just thinking about the reality of how these might be used, which is they'll turn up as an RFP statement saying your CNF is compliant to all the best practices because they're best practices. Why wouldn't you be compliant? Right, but there's things that, so we, we this is part of the conversation that we had in the chat room, right? There are things that if you do X, you are not cloud native. Those are fairly, I think, much easier to define than what makes you cloud native. At least that's the conversation um, we had. So. The question then becomes, just because something's a best practice, so we, we, in RFPs, traditionally, you'll have things that are must and things that you know, are, are optional. So why wouldn't the musts be requirements and the best practices be how many of these best practices do you align to? Mm -hmm. That's uh, true. Okay. It's going to be absolutely that's, how RF, that, that's how most RFPs are written, right? It's these are the yeah. must things you must do, and then these are the optional things, and they ask you to explain for each of those optional things why you are or aren't compliant. Maybe we just need to define stateless a little more precisely, uh, because one can argue that uh, 
TCP um, state machine is very stateful. Um, and we know that quite a few workloads are going to have to terminate TCP sessions on them. So we may need to consider that for the telco use, use case, we need to define what do we mean by I stateless. think this is not the only place we're going to get into a conversation of must okay. versus shall. Yeah. Right, yeah. Now what we're, we're, right now, what we're trying to do is say, do we even want a section that talks about handling state at all? And that's all this is about. This is putting in a table of contents to say later at some point, if someone wants to talk about best practices for how you handle state, it would go under this section. And then the, the way that the proposal set up has all these things like caveats and problems with mm -hmm. if there's a suggestion. But this, this um, pull request that we're looking at is not defining that you must follow it, um, stateful practices in a certain way. It's just saying that's a section. Yeah, this, yeah, okay, this, is, so. a good, um, this is a good example that we do have something that's anal analogous though. So when like talking about state and connections and TCP sessions when, or, or, or flows and so on. So when you look at a microservice, uh, very likely it's taking in a TCP connection. If that TCP connection were to fail in a microservice, let's say it's a TLS connection, uh, you lose that connection. And so that, that's what I was saying. It, it's not about the ephemeral state. Yeah, focus specifically on, on persistent state. Like when, when, if, if, if I'm running like an SDN database, then uh, that state has to live somewhere. And if I lose it, then it's catastrophic. But if I lose a TCP connection, it goes off and uh, tries to reconnect. It's something that's, uh, that's ephemeral. And so do try to, to keep the, the, two, the two separate when we, when we talk about this. And we should explicitly call this out. Like, and these are, these are patterns that we see in, in uh, even enterprise applications that, uh, that it's, not, it's, it's not a hard, uh, a hard rule in, in that specific way, but instead there's a there's a balance that's struck, and the the push is to get that persistent state to to live somewhere else, not not in the thing that's doing the heavy lifting. Yeah, so um, I'm going to pause the conversation here. I think these are all great conversations, but we kind of have three separate threads going on here. One is the table of contents. The second one is state, and the third one's about how we should use best practices. And I think, I think they're all like super good conversations. Uh, so to get this pull request merged, I think we just need to focus on like, are we okay with this table of contents? And then I think the two other discussions around how do we, what does stateless mean and how do we use it is another great discussion, but should be in a separate thread to kind of like separate them out. And the other one about how we should use best practices uh, is another discussion, but that should be in a separate thread just so that we can kind of segment things and we're not kind of, having all of our conversations in one things, if that makes sense. So um, as a suggestion, could you just change the word from stateless to state? Yeah, yeah. It might just, that would go far because then you could talk about it in the negative and the positive. I agree. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I think that's- I'll accept the change once you do that, commit it. Um, Taylor, I put a spelling mistake in there for you on the comment. Where is that? Uh, you ask these difficult questions. Um, line 12, uh, no. That's a fine question. Uh, line 26. All right, I see it. Can you make that a committable suggestion? Do you know how to do that? Uh, I don't. Click edit on your comment. No. And then um, when you're in the edit, it's just to the right of preview. So you have right tab, preview tab, and then this little plus minus for insert ah, suggestion. That would be an issue, yes. Uh, okay. I just found it like a couple of months ago, but it makes it easy. Yeah. All right. 
Brian, did I accurately represent you there? Um, this is one again I'll take offline after the meeting, but just to ask a question, was there anything about testability in the framework for a given best practice? Yes, there is. Did we get all, did we resolve all of them? Check in a second. I'm just writing down some notes. It's a test plan. Okay, fine. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think. I think we got them all. So, okay, great. Oh, one more thing in the chat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you for the suggestion, Brian. I, I think that was um, really good. So, problem. Uh, I'm just going to merge this pull request here. Okay. Great. Um, and then, so after the meeting, also create um, discussions around like handling state now, now that that's a, a section and also how to use best practices. Cause I, I think those are both things that we need to address and pro provide guidance on. Um, great. Um, so the next thing is around the user stories. And I know Ian, you brought up this um, on the last call I did, and in actual fact, um, offline, I think Taylor has a document that's that's part of the way there as well. And I've been writing something that's currently still on my laptop that for this. But um, this might play back to uh, what we were talking about in as regards um, control and data plane CNFs. But I think it also ought to have a bit of context as to things like core versus edge, because it will make a difference. And then some things that probably aren't variables like or well depends on how you look at it um one of the things that's going to make a difference to how to run a cnf is that it runs in different circumstances than some apps so for instance if i'm running in aws as an example then there is if i want to basically make my cluster 10 times bigger for 30 seconds while i do an upgrade then that's a possibility but for most CNF circumstances, that isn't likely to be a possibility. So I think some of these, whether you call them user stories or how you want to phrase it, some of those things probably ought to be written down as well. They don't necessarily dictate best practices, but they dictate the environment in which the best practices are operating, for instance. Does that also apply to things like hardware acceleration and things of that nature? Yeah, in the sense that I think you can reasonably assume that hardware acceleration is available, um, which again, if you were to look at a public cloud and you wanted an Intel N3000 card, then, you know, you ain't getting it, hard luck. So, um, you know, expecting that hardware acceleration is present and enabling it in the platform and having a way to consume it in the CNF and a best practice for that does make sense, yeah. I think you could argue a best practice for how to consume X hardware, right? So it doesn't have to be hardware acceleration it could be a nick it could be anything yeah i'm not yeah. judging um okay. if you yeah. if you want to go and use a gpu or and you're almost certainly going to want to use crypto accelerator in some circumstances then i don't think that's inappropriate um how it's so you're saying how it's exposed needs to be standardized so that it can be tested again yeah and and i i i'm thinking in terms of of building the house of cards again. So the foundation is that there is a reason that you're going to want to expose this, which is it's going to be present in some circumstances and some CNFs are absolutely going to require it. And then a level, which is this is how you get it from a CNF and then a best practice, which is this is the only way you get it from a CNF. Hard luck if you want to try a different way. This is good enough for you and uh, breaking that rule would be fruitless. Okay. 
Okay. Um, Ian, do you mind if I assign you to this issue? No, that's fine. I've been, uh, my last week was terrible, so I didn't really get much chance to do this and I know I'm slacking, so I'll, I'll take it on. Okay, no worries. What's your GitHub username? IA Wells. Uh, maybe I can't seem to find you. Uh, maybe I, that's maybe me. I'm that is oh, maybe, maybe you're not part of the, the repo. It's possible. Um, Taylor, obviously, I'm, I'm deeply offended by that, obviously, but yes, <laughs> it's quite possible. Okay. Um, I've, in, I've invited you, Ian. I'll, um, it may have expired, though, so I'll go add you again and then send you an invite right now. Okay. Probably got buried. Okay. You're making projects. Uh, yes, I am. Not a member of the project, I see that, okay. okay. Uh, I'll follow up and then um, get you assigned to it once you join the uh, repo. And then kind of related to that, um, there's two discussions going on right now that I just wanna kind of highlight for people. One is around like defining the actors. And so there is, like, or the audiences, there's like quite a bit of stuff in here. And also I know uh, book made a diagram. Uh, I think it's in the Slack channel. Um, uh, he's not on, it seems like he dropped off the call, um, but it's in the Slack channel. So if anybody wants to like work on the actors audiences, this I think is also, um, somewhat ready to go. Taylor, do you want to say anything on the networking use cases? Uh, sure, so this is related to the discussion that we were having, I guess it was um, two weeks ago, the last one. We already have a section in the proposals to, to add use cases, but um, Ian was wanting to make sure those are really brought up to the front so that they're going to be useful. Like one use case might be um, used for many different best practices. So uh, we'll probably end up with a spot on the repo similar to the best practice proposals just for use cases. And this is a discussion to kind of start that and list um, different networking use cases and um, that we can reference. And then we'll probably break out any of these. So if, if there's a specific use case that someone wants to discuss before bringing, uh, like putting a pull request, then you could start a brand new discussion. But if you're just wanting to list some, then we can do that. I, I added some that different people have, have put in, like Ian's um, mentioned something around BGP speakers and Frederick talked about a um, inline up the wall, firewall, and pointing one thing out, I put networking use case and not specific to telco um, use cases, since from a, the standpoint of the applications, there are many of them and maybe even the majority of them that are used by telcos, they would be networking and they may be seen other, other places like that. Inline firewall is going to be seen in um, telco use cases. It's also gonna be, you're going to see it in enterprise. You can see it on edge networking all over. So specifying, um, giving some context like where the use cases you've seen it would be helpful. Okay, great, thanks. So if people have more networking use cases, feel free to add them to the discussions here. Um, then the next one is this other discussion here um, around CNF configuration. Um, this is another one that someone started around how do we manage configuration changes? Uh, what's the cloud native way of managing it? Um, so if you're interested in this discussion, feel free to jump in here. Um. I haven't opened it yet, but I think it would also be worth having a discussion on packaging because 
internally, one of the conversations we had is configuration is a fine example. Um, if you say you will use netconf, then 50% of the world will hate you. If you say you will use rest, the other 50% will hate you. So uh, you can't win on that. And somebody will come up with a different way of doing this. Um, so when it comes to packaging, there's a couple of things there. One is that obviously all the bits of your CNF, somehow you want to bundle up and say, this is how you use it. This is how you deliver it and so on. So that's one part. But another part is, you know, if you're allowed to describe your configuration interface, you're not necessarily ruling out that somebody decides to make their newest CNF with SNMP because somehow they think it's the best practice and everybody should do this in the future. If you had a description in your package saying this CNF uses SNMP for better or worse, then you're not necessarily dictating or ruling out change in the future. It might be one option to consider. So do you see packaging and configuration as one conversation or is No, I see packaging as another one. I just think there are overlaps between the two. Um, but so I'll open a packaging discussion when you give me the power and then we will talk about both together. You're not able to, um, I didn't catch that earlier. So you can't just click and start a new discussion right now. I haven't tried. Um, but I don't, I don't. Oh yeah, no, no, I can. All right, okay, fine. good, good. Yeah, I'm wanting it open to the world. If we end up getting spammed, right. then we'll deal with that. So just to make it clear for everybody on the call, if if you have a topic that you want to discuss, then please use the discussion button and just add it. Besides, of course, anything in this meeting, there's a just like a ticket or a pull request. You can go in and click the new discussion button at the top and and add something and it, they have it labeled too by the way if like you want to do like a q a thing you can do that or sh they have it show and tell so you may have like a topic where you want to discuss a specific example application but please add them if you have something also if you missed it in the chat uh, thanks, Tell, for posting it. Uh, sh shameless plug for some of my recent work on cloud native, not conf, rest comp management. Um, and you provide a link to his GitHub in there. So if you want to check that out too, the link's in the chat. Okay. Um, is there anything that anyone else wants to discuss today, or is there any, any of the discussions that people want to dive into deeper right now? Okay, um, hearing nothing, um, it seems like now that we've got the table of contents uh, pretty much merged, or we, now that we have the table of contents merged and the proposal um, like template um, merged too, it'd be great to have some people start proposing best practices um, <laughs> so that we can uh, start sparking the discussion around what really is a, a cloud native best practice and like how we can move forward. There's also I think some great discussions here and great jumping off points um, that, that we can have, especially around state and how people can use these best practices. Um, the last thing for today is um, Bill, a few Bill, people- Bill, can I add real quick on the best practice? Um, yeah. Okay, so the, if, if you're coming from the CNF side or you have a networking application and you wanna talk about it and figure out the best practices, then please just go and start that way. So if, if you don't have a best practice su suggest yet, but you want to find out one for a use case or the networking app, then please add to those discussions and then we can say, well, I'd like to dig into it. So the we'll, that bump in a wall, firewall is probably one that we can start breaking down and talk about. So you can come from a, any, any different way. And then the other thing is right now our focus is on to get it um, more concrete, we're saying cube native. So what are the Kubernetes native best practice around creating a inline firewall? So not in general for any different platform or anything else so that we could have a very focused discussion. We 
can expand from that later. So if you have an application or a use case, then bring those forward and we can talk about it for best practices. If you have a Kubernetes best practice that you've been seeing and you want to see how it can be applied to networking or telecom in general, then you can bring that forward either direction. Cool. Thanks, Taylor. Um, yeah, and the last thing um, for today. Um, so Taylor and I help you know, kind of get this off the ground. And what we're looking for right now is people to really lead the charge forward on this working group. And we've had a few people express interest in becoming chairs of the working group. If you're interested in becoming one of the working group chairs, please feel free to, to reach out to me. Um, and we hope to have them um, later this month too. Um, and then those people, it'll be community-led um, initiative more than just Taylor and, myself, uh, Taylor and myself. And we'll also be posting it to the mailing list. So yeah, that's all I have for today. Um, thanks everybody for joining and for the lively conversation. Um, we really thought it was great and looking forward to next week. Thanks everyone. Cheers.